Hello and welcome, friends. Uh, you might be here for a bunch of different reasons. You might love trading card games and know this is the next one coming out. You might be an expert and you want to see how much about this story I get wrong. Or you might just be a Disney lover who wants to see what Disney's doing now. Either way, let's talk about whatever the heck Lorcana is. Welcome to Illumineer Academy. Here we're gonna cover everything that surrounds Disney Lorcana. If you don't know what that is, don't worry. This video is specifically here to tell you all about this new and exciting game. Well, I mean, at least it's exciting to me. We're also gonna just throw out some random other Disney content as we just love Disney. If you don't know what Disney Lorcana is, don't feel bad, you're not alone. But before I go too far into it, let me just give you a brief summation, an idea of what Disney Lorcana is. Disney Lorcana is the newest TCG or trading card game. A TCG is a game that you play using cards you've bought or collected. You can also trade these cards with your friends or with other people. Notable TCGs you've probably heard about before are things like Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, or Yu-Gi-Oh! So Disney Lorcana is the newest to enter this really competitive realm of trading card games. It hasn't officially been released yet. It'll be released on September 1st at local game stores as well as Gen Con Indianapolis. All right, so now we have a very, very, very basic understanding of what Disney Lorcana is. In this video, I'm just going to be covering what the main story is, or at least the story that they've released so far. If that's something that you don't really care about, that's totally fine. We're going to be releasing videos very shortly about how to play the game, what different strategies for the game could be, and gameplay itself. So just look out for those videos. Okay. Let's get into this semi-story, or I guess at least a story that's been released so far. If you go onto Disney Lorcana's website, you can find the story section, and in there they have, I guess, the brief story that's out so far. The first paragraph starts like this. A swirl of colorful starlight appears growing brighter and brighter until it is all you can see. When the burst of light subsides, you find yourself in a wondrous new place. Welcome to the Great Illuminary, the center of a magical realm called Lorcana. The beginning of this story really shows what I think the aim of Disney Lorcana is. They really want to pull you into the story. They want you to instantly be a part of it. A lot of the other trading card games, I mean, they do it for the most part. Magic makes you a planeswalker. Pokemon makes you a trainer. But this one really wants to take you in. If I got any of that stuff wrong, please let me know. Anyway, I feel like the main idea is to pull the players into the game to make them feel like a character to make them feel like a part of it as is the Disney way as someone who lives in the Disneyland area I've spent a lot of time at the parks and that's the whole thing they do there every single employee is a cast member none of them break character anytime they're in front of guests they're considered to be on stage and it's I wouldn't say a fireable offense but I know it's a huge slam if they end up breaking character and that's the whole idea around Disneyland and basically everything Disney does is they want to fuel that imagination imagination of everyone who goes. They want to fuel all of that. And Lorcana is doing the same thing. They're they're starting their story. They're telling you you're in this realm of Lorcana and you use your imagination to fill in the blanks and become the story. This imagination is in all that Disney does. I think I went on a little bit of a tangent about the parks there, but I mean, it's important. Disney's idea, they pull you in and that's what this story does right from the beginning. The story continues as such. The Illuminary summoned you here because of your powerful imagination. Again here, they're calling right back to one of Disney's Disney's main ideas. One of the most famous quotes from Walt Disney is, laughter is timeless, imagination has no age, dreams are forever. The story already ties into imagination, it already ties into dreams, and I'm sure it's gonna tie into laughter soon, if not in the cards, in more story that comes out besides this short little blurb we get now. Anyway, again, and I gotta start keeping this stuff concise. Story continues. You follow a pulsing line of light through curving hallways and numerous rooms to emerge into a vast atrium. A mechanism there towers over an open book. Sparkling down from above is a stream of colorful story stars, each containing fragments of Disney stories. The idea here is that you've now entered the world of Lorcan. I mean, that's probably pretty obvious, but I've already said it, so we're just, we're moving on. You're going through these, these hallways that you don't know. You're passing these rooms that hold mysteries and abundance, and at least I imagine it's like a bunch of disembodied parts of different Disney characters just kind of like floating aimlessly through space and like colliding at some points and making these weird hodgepodge collections of like half Goofy, half Mickey, half Pluto, that's three halves. Probably not what's behind those doors. Regardless, you get past that, and then you're in the main foyer, the main atrium, the main part of the Lorcana building that you're in. And this is how you directly see how you play the game and make the cards. And then the story goes, nearby, a unique tool catches your eye. It's an ink caster. And when you pick it up, it feels both exciting and familiar. Instinctively, you hold it high above the open book. Magical ink pulsing with energy flows through the mechanism and combines with the light from a story star on a page of the lore book in front of you, creating an image of a Disney character. 
there. With the power of your ink caster, the image rises off the page. This is a glimmer, a new version of the character that only exists in this world. As an Illumineer, you can create glimmers of characters and items to add to the lore of Lorcana, a treasure that must be preserved and protected at all costs. This, to me, feels like the real culmination of the story, I mean, the story we've gotten so far. It's telling you directly what you're doing and what your part in this world would be. So you are an Illumineer, hence Illumineer Academy. You see what we did there? Pretty clever, huh? If you're an Illumineer, what you do is you take these magical inks, you use your ink caster, and you create new stories that exist in Lorcana. You are the creator, you are the person imagining this. Subtle bonus point, if you know the tie between Illumineer and Imagineer, that's pretty cool. I'm pretty sure that's what they based it off of. In case you didn't know, Disney Imagineers are the people that create the rides and everything that you see at Disneyland, Disney World, Disneyland, all over the world. That was a weird little combination thing there, but yeah, Disney's all over the world. All the parks. Imagineers are the one who create those things. So being an Illumineer who creates new stories, it seems pretty cool. We are now fully integrated into the world of Lorcana in just this tiny little story. We have now become a part of it. The final full paragraph of the story says this. Soon, other Illumineers across the globe will be called to the aid of Lorcana. You'll summon glimmers to quest with you as you search for missing lore in a race against time. Only together can you protect this wondrous realm from threats. So I think the really important thing about this last section is it ties into you playing with others. It's already been stated by Disney, Lorcana, and Ravensburger, the people who make this game, that they're going to highly encourage the competitive gameplay of this. So I think that's what this story part is really tying into. And it's also allowing you to bring in your friends, your family, to be Illumineers with you, to create stories together. I think that's a really cool thing. The story also tells you there's other people like you. If you're ever feeling alone or lost, you know that there's other Illumineers across the world who are building stories alongside you. And that's just a really cool thing and I think I gotta give props to Disney for that. The story fully finishes with one final line, their call to action that is literally a call to action. It reads, will you answer the call? The final line really just ties it all together. I know I said every section has tied it together, but this is really it. Will you answer the call? Will you be the one who creates these new stories, who imagines these characters in ways we've never seen them before, puts people together who shouldn't be working together, who puts Aladdin working with, I don't know, Captain Hook or something weird like that. You are the one who is creating these stories. And that I think is the whole thing. You're there to create new stories, to imagine fun. It seems pretty cool, right? I totally agree. The only issue is, I mean, the game hasn't been released yet and this is all we have for story so far. So I guess I have a bunch of questions to follow this up with and maybe you know them, maybe you have some ideas and I guess I can offer my own suggestions as well. My first question is, are we gonna go to all these different places that the characters are from? Uh, for example, we saw an Aladdin already that was called Floodborne. So are we gonna go to a world where we see that everything has been flooded and Aladdin has somehow become this like adventurous knight or something? If you know anything about Magic the Gathering, they have different planes of existence. Is this a thing we're going to see in Lorcana? Are we going to be able to go to each of these different planes, see different versions of different characters on these different planes, I guess? To further the question, are they in a shared universe? So let's say we do go to this flood world. Are we going to see Aladdin there and then him just like hanging out with Simba on the weekends and suddenly Mulan shows up and, and they're having like some get together? Simba, Mulan, and Aladdin, I guess? My next question really comes down to, is there going to be a big bad? I mean, they've release cards already that are villains we so it would make sense that I guess some of the villains could team up and they could be the big bad but it, the game also encourages you to team heroes and villains together so I'm just wondering if there's going to be like some overarching theme and villain that's going to take over the world or at least try to we look at magic again I, I know I keep referencing it it's just I have the most experience with it so it's my easiest callback they have these things called Eldrazi and they have a thing called Phyrexians both have been big bads at one point recently like in the most recent story at least I guess at the time of this video, the Phyrexians are threatening to take over the entire multiverse of Magic the Gathering. Like they're, they're threatening to like invade every single aspect of that. Is that something we're going to see in Lorcana? I think that would be a really cool thing to see. I just don't know where they're going with the story so far, because again, this is this is really all we have. I think a really cool thing to do, and I guess the most obvious way to do a, a really big bad in Lorcana would be to have someone who's taking over the ink, someone who has found a way to infect the ink that we as Illumineers are using to cast these glimmers of the characters. 
I think that could be a really fun and inventive way to then add even more complexity to the characters themselves. So you could have your characters that have been infected with this ink. I guess infected is stealing directly from magic, but who have been tainted by this new ink and they have a darker color to them or they have red or greens or I guess a defining color that makes them different than their, their normal selves. Or maybe we get an additional ink. I, I'm not gonna go into inks right now. There's gonna be a whole video covering what the inks mean, but maybe we get a whole new one added to the six we have so far. The last question comes down to how much Disney are we really going to see? Are they going to expand into Pixar, into Star Wars, into Marvel? At least right now, and I guess to my best understanding, it's just specifically Disney Animation Studios properties that we're getting in this stuff. We're, I mean, we're getting the 3D animated ones, we're getting the regular 2D animated ones, not to say regular, but the 2D animated ones as, it, as we got Moana, and we've gotten things all the way back to like Sleeping Beauty and Cinderella. So I guess, are they going to do that? I think Pixar would be really cool. I don't think that they're gonna really go into Marvel or they're gonna go into Star Wars. I know recently they released card games for both and like most recently they released Marvel Snap which is like an online version of a like trading card game. Um, so I don't I really don't think they're gonna go into Star Wars or Marvel nor do I think it would really add to it. I think Pixar would be a really fun addition to get some of like Toy Story into there. I don't know if Up would be super helpful. You could get like Kevin that would be a good one but I think Toy Story would be good maybe not cars. Okay so maybe not Pixar. <laughs> But I mean, I guess they have enough in Disney animation that they could go on for a really long time. I'm just really excited to see what they do, what they continue to do. And I guess if they do different stylings of all these different characters, if they add in even more versions that you don't really need to expand into those other things. You don't need to tap into Pixar. You don't need to tap into Star Wars or Marvel because you're just adding different versions of these characters. Let's look at an example here. Let's say you want something space. So, I mean, you could just do a different version of one of the characters we already know that we already have in the game that's a Disney Animation Studios property, you put them in space. I mean, it's that easy. So if we look, I mean, we have that Aladdin that I was already talking about, the Floodborne one. I'm sure I'm showing it on the screen right now instead of just showing my face talking about having it on the screen. So he's Floodborne. That's not the Aladdin we've ever seen before. That's that's not an Aladdin that's in the movie. This is a completely new Aladdin. So why can't we put him in space? Put a little space helmet on him and now he's space Aladdin. And then there's no need for Star Wars. You know, I went on a bit of a tangent there, but I think, I guess it's an important discussion. So what's your opinion? Do you think they need to expand into it? I mean, is the argument for just expanding into Pixar or is it Marvel or is it Star Wars or what really is it? Do we want Super Spy Mater from the amazing film Cars 2 to be in Disney Lorcana? That's just a suggestion. So in conclusion, to just wrap everything together of all this random tangents that I definitely went on and I need to stop doing, but I probably won't. Just to wrap this all together, this tiny little story we have that I've expanded into however long this video is, because who knows, because I still have to edit it. A story that pulls us in right away. It does the Disney thing. It makes its players a part of it instantly. You are the one completely controlling the narrative, which is what Disney does. We see that we're going to see different aspects of characters and ideas we haven't seen before, and they're encouraging us to feel like we're the ones coming up with this kind of stuff even though I mean they're already out there and they're definitely planned a really cool concept I'm super excited to see how the rest of the cards come out how the rest of the game comes out and really this just all of it <laughs> I don't know that sounds kind of lame now that I've said it out loud but I'm I'm excited for it I love Disney I love Disney animation and I love trading card games I'm excited to continue making content about this for one and excited to just start playing the game and see where this story goes where it takes us where it expands and just see all kinds of new stuff so thanks again everyone for I guess sticking to the end if you made it this far um, I really appreciate you watching it if you have any questions please feel free to leave them in the comments we're here to answer whatever you want to know if you have any ideas on what you think the story is gonna do where you think it's going next or just any ideas about Lorcana or Disney you just throw it down in the comments and we'll try and get back to you as fast as we can thanks again for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and have a great rest of your day